So today I start. I decided to to show you some the last results that we got from a project, an European project, edit that just was concluded uh, last year, last September. So this project is about uh, uh, to identify a solution, to identify a strategy for uh, detecting very small cancer lesions in the bladder. So, th so today the topic is bladder cancer. So why bladder? Bladder is the 10th most common cancer globally with more than half uh, new million uh, new cases every year. And although it is only the 10th most common cancer globally, it is the most expensive cancer to be treated if you consider the cost for each patient. So the annual worldwide cost is 10 billion euro per year. So every patient every year in Europe costs more than $6,000 and in the USA more than $60,000. So why bladder cancer is so expensive to be treated? So, because there are uh, at least uh, two unmet clinical needs. So, because the, the same cancer patient undergo uh, multiple uh, relapses after the first diagnosis. It means that every couple of years, the same patients have a relapse. And so it needs to be treated again, again, and again. And if the disease uh, is, becomes more invasive, the, the patient have the bladder removed when the tumor becomes muscle invasive. So why there are so many relapses in this patient? Because there are at least two problems in the management of bladder cancer. The first is that uh, about diagnosis. So there are not efficient uh, techniques, imaging techniques for diagnosis, for uh, the diagnosis of the bladder cancer. For example, ultrasound imaging, but also TAC and MRI, are able to detect tumors that are bigger than five millimeters in size. Okay. And, but and the, uh, the gold standard technique for imaging bladder cancer is cystoscopy. It means uh, uh, a tube, okay, that goes in directly into the bladder through the urethra with a video camera. And in that case, you can recognize the surgeon can recognize the tumor bigger than one millimeter. The point is that uh, for tumors that are less than one millimeter, there are no chance to be diagnosed. And this is particularly true for the in situ carcinoma the, of the bladder. That is always the most aggressive cancer. It is always made of few neoplastic cells. It has a reddish, uh, it is reddish. So it is very difficult, difficult to be recognized. So the point is that this, during the surgical intervention, the surgeon is able to remove the tumor only if he sees the tumor. It means that uh, the tumors that are smaller than one millimeter remain in the bladder, and those give rise to the relapse in the next uh, month. The second point is about treatment, that about 50% of the patient do not respond to the intravesical treatment that is uh, metamassin C or the bacillus of Calmegare. So these two unmet clinical needs are very likely are responsible for the high frequencies of the relapse and the cost of the bladder cancer treatment. And okay, and see here you can see the consequences of these two problems. So the patients that undergo a removal of the tumor, that and after a few weeks it goes to a six weekly intravesical intubation treatment. And in the next five years, the routine is to do 14 cystoscopy, just to check if there is a relapse. Uh, obviously, if a tumor um, occurs again in, during the follow-up, all these procedures start again and again and again. So we, um, we have de developed a solution that in this uh, project, in the edit project, so we develop a solution and we demonstrate the feasibility of the solution. So the solution um, foresee to develop a, a new imaging technique that has the chance to detect the small bladder cancer lesion smaller than one millimeter. So this imaging combines, it is a multimodal imaging that combines ultrasound and photoacoustic imaging. And at the same time, this solution is also, is also able to perform a treatment. 
because this solution, the, the multimodal imaging, uses urine stable targeted gold nanoros as a contrast agent for photoacoustic imaging. But at the same time, the gold nanoros can be used to do treatment and to burn the cancer cell. So how this happens? <clears throat> At first, uh, we can use gold nanoros because gold is a biocompatible metal. And in the form of nanoros, okay, it is uh, the, the, the nanoros are able to convert the pulse laser light into ultrasound. So we convert light into ultrasound, and this is the photoacoustic, mm, photoacoustic mm, process. And, and so in this way, we can through an ultrasound probe put on the abdomen of the patient, we can detect the ultrasound, okay? So, and the beauty of the photoacoustic imaging is that it has a lateral resolution of about 100 meters. So, it's suitable to detect small lesion um, smaller, than half, smaller than one millimeter. So, and obviously, in this case, we use gold nanoros as a contrast agent for the photoacoustic imaging. But at the same time, the same gold nanoros, if, uh, if it is irradiated with continuous laser light, it can release the uh, energy that acquires to the light. It releases the same amount of energy as a heat. So you can burn the cancer cells where the gold nanos are bound to. So, um, okay, and this is just a, a summary of what I just told you. So you can, in this case, we irradiate the animal from the outside with the laser light. So we put the gold nanos inside through a catheter into the bladder of the mice, of the animal. And from the outside, we irradiate the animal with the laser light. And the same, the, and the, the optical fiber are <laughs> together with the ultrasound probe. <laughs> so we irradiate the animal with the uh, laser light. <clears throat> and with the um, ultrasound transducer, we detect the photoacoustic signal. So this is a cartoon. So basically, we instill through a catheter, we instill the gold nanoros that are targeted. And then I will show you the target. And uh, um, so we instill the, the targeted gold nanoros, and then we de detect the photoacoustic signal, and we also perform photoacoustic um, hyperthermia. So at first uh, we search, obviously we search for the target. So we search for the target, uh, and we start in particular for the in situ carcinoma. That, as I told you, this is our target because it is the most aggressive target, the most aggressive cancer. Just consider that uh, if a surgeon detects two in situ carcinoma in the same blood, uh, the patient has the blood removed. So it undergoes radical cystectomy just because of two in-situ carcinoma that may be a few millimeters each, okay? So because it is very, very aggressive. <clears throat> so at first we search for a target, for a marker for the in-situ carcinoma. So by immunohistochemistry, we search a lot of um, markers. And in this case, uh, this is the non-neoplastic tissue. These are all clinical samples. And just look at the brown staining that is the immunostochemistry staining. Here in the erotelium, there is no brown staining, but brown stain. Whereas in the in situ, here, these are two examples of in situ carcinoma. You can see that there is on the border of the on the membrane of the cells, there is the brown staining. It means that this in situ cancer cells express the integrin alpha 5 beta 1. So this integrin is not present in the normal urotelia cells and is also not present in the uh, benign lesions of the urotelium, that is this inner part, and also is negative in the dysplastic tissue. So integrin alpha 5 beta 1 is expressed only by the cancer cells, not by the preneoplastic or by the, uh, the normal urotelium. Obviously, as always happen for all type of tumors. This integrin is not expressed in 100% of the in-situ carcinoma, but it, we detect that it was expressed in about 70-75% of the tumors, okay, in different patients. So probably we will need to identify other markers to, have a, to, to be able to target all the in-situ carcinomas. 
Next, we search if the same marker was expressed also in the preclinical model. In this case, the preclinical model, it is MICE, in which we instill trochateter, we instill the syngenic cancer cells MB49. These cells are luciferated, so we can detect also by um, optical imaging the, the growth of the tumor. So, and this is um, after a few days, um, after a couple of weeks, uh, after the installation of the cancer cells, this uh, is uh, the, the presence of the tumor inside the blood. And also here, we <coughs> could detect that the tumor, this, this part here, express all the cells of uh, cancer cells express the same integrin that we detect in the human samples, that is the integrin alpha 5 beta 1, while the non-neoplastic rotelium is negative. So we detect the same marker that is expressed in the in our preclinical model as well as in the, in the clinical samples. So at first we so we identify the target that is the integrin alpha 5 beta 1. It is expressed only by human blood in cytocarcinoma, in the, by the murine orthotopic blood cancer, and it is not expressed by the normal rotilia cells, by dis dysplastic cells, or during blood inflammation. And this is in agreement with a quite an old paper that reported uh, the absence of the integrin alpha beta 1 in the rotilia cells, normal rotilia cells. Next, uh, we obviously uh, search for uh, a ligand for uh, to be used to, to, to recognize the integrin alpha 5 beta 1. And together with a group uh, of biochemists uh, in Hospital uh, Santa Fe, we identified this cyclic peptide named isoform. So this peptide was uh, reported a few months, few, few years ago by the same group that discovered the, the peptide. It is very specific for the integrin alpha phi beta 1. And then we decide to conjugate this peptide with the gold nanos. In particular, our gold nanos are coated with ketosine. It is a carbohydrate that is biocompatible. Uh, it's from Krebb. So ketosine is used to, to maintain the shape of the gold nanos as a nanorod. Okay. Otherwise, they become sphere. And keep in mind that we can uh, <clears throat> the photoacoustic effect is only uh, it can be used only when the gold is in the form of nanorods. If it in this form of sphere, it doesn't have the photoacoustic effect. So we use ketosan to maintain the shape of the gold nanorods, and then on top of the ketosan, we use a, a linker that is a PEG12 linker, and we <clears throat> Um, we are, we, in, the, in this way, we are able to attach the peptide isoform. We also develop a strategy, a protocol to um, produce quite a big amount of targeted gold nanos. In this case, we produce two liters of targeted gold nanos. They can be lyophilized and they are stable for more than four years as a um, powder. <clears throat> Next, obviously, we want to use the targeted gold nanos inside the bladder. So we use a catheter. So it means that the targeted gold nanos must be in, in a quite a harsh environment, that is the urine. Okay. So first we test in vitro that targeted gold nanos conjugated with the peptide isoform, that is a peptide that recognizes exclusively the integrin alpha 5 beta 1. Is able, uh, these gold nanos are able to induce cell adhesion of the MB49 cancer cell that we instill into the bladder, into the neuron bladder. So, targeted gold nanos are able to induce cell adhesion, while the non targeted gold nanos do not. And the cell adhesion, the, the ability to, in, to, to bind to, to the MB49 is maintained also in the presence of fium. So we were happy with this. So it means that our target gold nanos are stable in the presence of fium. Next, also, we want to check if the conjugation of the tetadisophore with the gold nanos can have an impact on the chemical physical properties of the gonads, in particular on the photoacoustic properties. So these are gonads that we embedded into agar. This is the photoacoustic spectra of the gonads with no isophore. And you can see that in the presence of the peptide isophore, the photoacoustic spectra is exactly the same. 
And the beauty also is that uh, we also design golden nanorods in a way to, 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 to explore the wavelength of in the near infrared, in the 808, 810 nanometers. That is in the, uh, opt in the biological window. It is a wavelength that doesn't burn the tissue that is passed by the laser. <clears throat> Also, we could demonstrate that uh, uh, the photoacoustic spectra is linear, um, is linear up to four nanomole, and then it goes uh, a bit to, to plateau, but it's fine. Uh, and that's then we moved. Uh, so we demonstrated that in the presence of urine, uh, gold nanorods man target gold nanos maintain the binding capacity. The uh, ISO4 doesn't modify the photoacoustic spectra of the gonads. Next, we move to in vivo. So, in this case, uh, a few days after the installation of the MB49 cells into the murine bladder, this is the tumor. Obviously, it is visible by ultrasound. Fine, we don't we don't need to go now. But in this case, we use this uh, setup to demonstrate that when we instill the gold nanorods here in green. We, the gold nanos are able to target the gold nanos, can bind only the tumor, only the neoplastic cell. So we don't have any unspecific binding to the normal rutilium, also because the normal rutilium does not express the integrin of FFD1. And so, and this is the 3D reconstruction of the entire uh, blood. So uh, we can, with this set of experiments, we can demonstrate the specificity of the photoacoustic signal. Uh, released by the targeted gold nanos in the presence of urine. Obviously, our goal is the detection of very small lesions that are not detectable by ultrasound imaging, for example. So in this case, we have animals in which uh, after the installation of the cancer cells into the bladder, at this time point, we were not able to see by ultrasound any lesion, any tumor. There are only few spots here on the top but it is quite impossible to say if that is a tumor or if it is a wrinkle of the bladder or an artifact. So in this animal, after uh, after taking this image, we still have the target gold nanos, and indeed we could demonstrate that in this frame there were at least three, three, three areas in which uh, uh, we got the photoacoustic signal. And when we do the, photo, the 3D reconstruction, indeed we can recognize many, many uh, area that are the you know, plastic area that were not detectable by ultrasound. A few days later, we let the animal in the cage, and a few days later, we could demonstrate that the tumor we detect by ultrasound, the occurrence of the you know, plastic mass, exactly in the same region that were recognized five days before by using the gold numbers. Then here we have another uh, set of animals, another, um, another um, demonstration that nine days after that we instilled the cancer cells into the blood, by ultrasound again we could not detect any neoplastic mass, but uh, we could detect here in green, yes, uh, indicated by the arrow, we could detect several uh, spots with the photoacoustic signal. In this case, uh, uh, what I want to show you here is we always scan the entire bladder of the animal. Okay, in this case, we have 55 frames. So here there are frame 20, 22, 24, just to show you that there are several frames in which we have the photoacoustic signal. Then, three days later, we repeated the imaging of the same animal, and in this case, we collected 56 frames, and we could detect neoplastic mass in the frame 26, 28, and 30. So, we are in the same region. So, it means that this signal were not an artifact, were not false signal, but uh, were really neoplastic lesion undetectable by ultrasound, but were detectable by, uh, by the photoacoustic imaging of the target gonads. And all these signals are smaller than half millimeter. So this is just a second set of demonstration that we can really have using the photo by doing photoacoustic imaging of target gonads, we can recognize 
lesion smaller than half a millimeter of size. <laughs> Obviously, uh, we also check for some safety, safety data. We, because the gold nanos are prepared by a colleague of mine that is at the University of Bologna, they are prepared in the lab. There are some uh, minimal contamination of endotoxin. So our preparation contains two milliunit of endotoxin LPS. However, we could demonstrate that by, uh, by histology, we could demonstrate that the tissue was normal one week after instilling the gold nanorods. It, was, it is normal because we know that this is the rutilial cells. There are only two layers of rutilial cells as expected. Here it is the lamina propria and below here the uh, muscle layer. Mm -hmm. While as a positive control, we instill five units of LPS, of endotoxin. And for example, you can appreciate here that there is an hyperplastic region, okay, an increased number of rotilial cells. Uh, here indicated by the red arrow, there are apoptotic bodies. And here in the lamina propria, there is an inflammatory infiltrate. So, so this is just to tell you that uh, our um, gold nanorods do not induce any local uh, damage. There are no signs of uh, unspecific disease induced by the gold nanorods, no toxicity. <coughs> so about this first part, uh, about the imaging and about early detection of neoplastic modification, we could say that we identify a target that is expressed both in the human bladder cancer, in particular by the in-situ carcinoma, that is the integrin alpha-5 beta-1. Uh, we identify a lag and that is very specific for this integrin that is the peptide ISO4. We could demonstrate the feasibility of the scale-up of the synthesis of the targeted gonanols, so we can produce up to two liters and in the form of a leophilized product, they are stable for more than four years. These target gold nanos are working properly also in the presence of purine. They are specific for only for the neoplastic cells, so do not bind urotilia cells or uh, non-neoplastic non cells. The sensitivity is less than half a millimeter and they are safe, also because the installation is local. So, uh, so thanks to the grant by this uh, Horizon 2020 grant, we could say that we are able to detect the undetectable lesion. So we develop a solution that is the first photoacoustic application in bladder cancer to detect lesions below one millimeter of size. Here I just select a um, few papers that we the papers that we published in the last couple of years about imaging with gold nanos and photoacoustic imaging and phototermal therapy. <clears throat> this is the uh, final. I want to acknowledge <clears throat> all the aided consortium, the consortium made by about 40 researchers, <clears throat> European researchers from nine European institutes from Greece, Israel to UK. In particular, I want to acknowledge <coughs> people that contributed to the data that I show you today. So from my group, uh, Elise, Irene, Chiara, Filippo, and Andrea, for taking care of the animals, perform all the in vivo studies with animals. Roberta Luciano, a pathologist that made diagnosis, uh, immunostochemical analysis. The group of Angelo Corti, in particular Flavio Kurnis, for the identification of the peptide isopor and the characterization of the peptide. Diana Troianiello for the project management. University of Bologna, the group of Professor Mauro Comes Franchini for the synthesis and characterization of gold nanoros. Okay, they are expert in gold nanoros. People from Fujifilm uh, Visosonics, in particular Gitin. Sandra Dieter and Savino for uh, explaining, for teaching us how to do photoacoustic imaging and for data interpretation, for acquisition and analysis of photoacoustic data. <clears throat> the group of Luca Menichetti, in particular Paolo Armanetti from the CNR of Pisa for experiment with hyperthermia. Um, from UK, in particular, the group of Victor Popov for uh, um, 
the design, the mathematical modeling of hyperthermia. So for setting up the proper condition to perform hyperthermia. 